Thank you, Malcolm. C'est un honneur d'être ici aujourd'hui en tant que président et chef de la direction de la Corporation commerciale canadienne. I'm going to talk a little bit about CCC, and uh, I guess we have someone controlling slides, so I'll just uh, say next slide when we get to those, if I could. Um, CCC, to start out, just to set the context for the conversation, CCC is not a banking institution. We work very closely with one of our sister organizations in, in the Canadian government, Export Development Canada, which does financing and insurance across a broad spectrum of industries and works uh, ex quite actively in Africa. But CCC is an organization that's all about mitigating risks and making projects more financeable. And so that's one of the key contributors that you'll hear about today from from CCC. So if we can just go to the next slide, please. Uh, in terms of an agenda, I'll talk a little bit about CCC, our value proposition, both for government buyers and Canadian exporters, our opportunities and how we uh, present opportunities to projects and mitigating risks. And so next slide, please. CCC, Canadian Commercial Corporation, is a crown corporation established in 1946 as part of the Marshall Plan to help rebuild Europe. It is 100% owned by the government of Canada and really is set to help develop uh, exports in foreign nations and help foreign governments buy from Canadian exporters. And many of you will know that Canada has a broad wealth of engineering and other type expertise that is used across the globe and uh, CCC works closely with those exporters to bring those projects to fruition. Um, one of our key services is that we get engaged in government to government contracting, which provides a lot of strength and faith in mitigating risks for projects. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the forward slides. So if we go to the next slide, please. So CCC offers contracting in markets where transparency and competitiveness are very important. We know that many markets across the globe are worried about corruption and bribery, those sorts of events. Canadian Commercial Corporation as a Canadian institution prides itself on being able to work in markets and avoid those sorts of uh, approaches to business. We have a role as a prime contractor where we offer a guarantee of service delivery, significantly mitigating the risk on a project in, in many countries. And to make the point about being a Crown Corporation, of course, contracts signed by CCC have the same legal authority as if they were signed by the Government of Canada directly. If we go to the next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that, next slide, please. I, t I talk about that in the phone. So the, this slide depicts how CCC is situated within the Government of Canada. We talk about having an international trade portfolio. And so the Minister of International Trade, Minister Ed Fast, has three organizations that comprise that portfolio. The first is CCC, where we do government-to-government -government contracting. The second, I mentioned earlier, Export Development Canada, which gets involved in financing and insurance. And the third is the Canadian Trade Commissioner Service, which is positioned broadly throughout the world promoting Canadian expertise. And so you can see on any project, whether it's a, a power plant, whether it's an, an airport build, whether it's something in the defense and security sector, often any or all of those organizations work together to try and mitigate risks and bring forward the best Canadian solution for the buying government. Next slide, please. In Africa, we've, CCC has been operating in Africa since about the mid-90s. We do have four signed memorandums of understanding in place with Gambia, Ghana, Kenya, and Uganda. Uh, we have five others under discussion right now. Uh, most of our focus has been in the infrastructure area, power, airports, and railways, uh, but also other types of infrastructure as well. The next slide, please. So why do people work with CCC? Why might a government in Africa want to work with CCC? Three principles that come into play. First of all, we have a fast and simple approach to business. Often governments will contract directly with a, uh, an enterprise, a business, to build a power plant, put in place roads and bridges. Our approach in a government-to-government -government model is not any different than that. We negotiate a contract between the two parties that stipulates what's going to be built or what's going to be delivered. And then CCC puts in place the exact same 
terms and conditions with a Canadian exporter to make that delivery or build that power plant, whatever the project may happen to be. So it's not a complicated set of rules. It's not a large manual that you have to be familiar with. It's a very simple approach to, to business. Clearly, we reduce the acquisition risk because when CCC signs a contract, we're guaranteeing the terms and conditions of that contract. So the country purchasing the power plant, the airport, whatever it might be, not only has the procurement resources of that country overlooking the project and making sure it comes off according to terms and conditions, but the Canadian government through CC is also providing that same oversight. So you have two governments doing oversight on a project at the same time, significantly reducing the risk of that project and therefore making it much more financeable, often with better terms and conditions and often with better rates that could be provided in a typical uh, acquisition from a direct company. And of course, it always enhances the bilateral relationship between Canada and the buying nation because uh, bilateral trade is an important indicator of the relationship in, uh, in our view. Next slide, please. Canadian exporters, why do businesses in Canada choose to work with CCC? It provides them increased access to foreign government markets. Often CCC has relationships or channels through which we can meet and discuss things with ministers and key senior executives in foreign governments that businesses in Canada would not be able to achieve on their own. There is a competitive advantage in going government to government in a contracting model, particularly, as I mentioned earlier, in countries where you're trying to establish a bilateral relationship, in countries where the leadership of the country is very concerned about corruption and bribery and they're trying to put in place a methodology that will avoid any of that sort of uh, unwanted attention and reducing the risk of the project by having both the procurement oversight of the Government of Canada as well as the buying nation in, involved in the project. Next slide, please. So what types of opportunities might be prime for a CCC involvement? Um, where government buyers are, are looking internationally for procurement of products or services, so products or services that aren't available in the host country. Uh, where structured financing solutions are needed and having CCC involved would help banks and other financial institutions become more comfortable in a lending arrangement. Um, where local employment skills and technology transfer from a project are sought. CCC has a very high um, expectation on our exporters that they will transfer knowledge to foreign governments as we do projects. I can say, for example, that when we built the airport in Quito, Ecuador, uh, at one point in time, there were 2,000 employees on that site, and over 1,900 of them were Ecuadorian. So it's a very high transfer of uh, employment and skills to the host country. And if you have an urgent requirement, often going through a government-to-government -government process can expedite what might happen in a normal RFP-type procedure. Next slide, please. So how do we mitigate risk? CCC, because we're, on, we're guaranteeing the terms and conditions of a contract, will not sign up to deliver a product and service unless we're confident that the Canadian supplier can do so. And in order to do that, we look at the managerial, technical, and financial capabilities of the Canadian company before we're willing to sign that contract and make sure they can deliver. And we also look at ethical business practices to make sure that we're comfortable with the supplier and how, how things will unfold. Next slide, please. I talked a minute ago about technical, financial, and managerial oversight. So next slide, please. When we assess a project, there are some other important elements that we look at. We look at governing law to determine whether or not uh, the governing law will be the host country law, New York law, or uh, London law are often places we look to to make sure we have a ne neutral jurisdiction. Uh, we try to negotiate contract terms and conditions that make sense for both the buyer and the supplier. And again, I've mentioned before, we're very concerned about bribery and corruption, so we put in place practices to make sure that we avoid those sorts of things. Next, next slide, please. We also look at political risk, buyer credit and bonding and guarantees. Those can be of benefit to both the buyer and in some cases the supplier. Obviously, if the Government of Canada is providing the full faith of our resources behind the project, we often feel that bonding is not a requirement or should not be a requirement. If we go to the next slide, please. And we have a commitment to ethical business practices. And so we have a corporate social responsibility framework that we apply to that has a code of conduct and ethics. And we look very closely at contracting language to make sure that it's fair for both the buyer and the supplier because we want to make sure that we have repeat business in the countries that we deal in. Next slide, please. And so on that, I'll close and just say that uh, CCC, I think for many years, has been a bit of an unknown entity. We don't, haven't been very good at marketing ourselves in the past. We're trying to be more and more proactive in terms of promoting 
this as an alternative for governments trying to buy. And we've seen our success rate go up tremendously uh, in the past few years. And so we hope that uh, some of you will be in contact with ourselves. Uh, we have some people here in the, uh, in the session, Don Olson, who's joined us here today, for example, and we'd be pleased to uh, take questions uh, later. Thank you very much. Thank you.